rare to get uh, lychee fruit. I don't know if most Americans have probably never had lychee fruit. In the grocery store, it's got this uh, little crust on it, and it's got a white fruit that you eat around it, and at the center of it, there's this neat little shiny seed. The wood on it is extremely valuable and highly prized for its grain and its beauty. You know, humanity, of course, and animals, you know, will eat the uh, fruit, carry it away, pick up the lychee fruit, peel it, start walking away, eat the fruit, and then drop the seed into the dirt or a ditch. Same thing. And that's exactly what the tree wants. <laughs> it wants you to take its seed and... Humanity basically sees everything upside down and backwards. We're fascinated, uh, of course, by the fruit. It feeds us, and it's nice and tasty and sweet. But uh, the nefarious plan of the tree is for humanity, of course, to take that seed and carry it hither, you know, have its uh, spawn rise up in other places and let life continue. It's interesting how humanity sees everything upside down and backwards. Um, I was contacted by a guy that I... And by, yeah, I have a new shirt. Got it at a discount store. Yeah, I think I, I got it at Ross or at Marshall's. I got it at one of the two. See, a new shirt. Yeah, I think it was like $13. Yeah, I'm a cheapskate. I'm not made out of money, that's for certain. Uh, the secrets of being in theurgy. And uh, I'll try to keep things simple. Uh, a Russian guy called me and I hadn't talked about a year. We talked about uh, theurgy and its nature. And uh, he said, you know, I'd say the same thing in a slightly different way to try to make it more clear. I said, well, you know, I can apply anything and uh, try to make it simple for people to understand. And I said, well, what do you do for a living? He says he sells uh, plumbing accessories. And, you know, his English is really good, but he's a native Russian. And uh, I said, well, I'll make it simple. And just on the fly, I came up with a rather perfect analogy of plumbing how removing the plumbing, you know, would cause the poo to pile up and, you know, uh, eliminate uh, free-flowing water, which human beings need for, you know, bathtub and sink and for drinking and stuff. And, uh, you know, you pull the plumbing out and, the per you know, the poo starts to pile up and you see the house for a piece of poo that it is. <laughs> you can't flush the toilet anymore. And you see the, the house is, you know, a construct. And you want to get out of it. And you reject it. And he actually thought that was quite brilliant. So I can come up with analogies on the fly. Um, I wanted to talk about this idea. And I know what people are caught up on. I really do. And this video actually is about the secret of uh, being and of theurgy. And of course, I'm writing a book on theurgy. Make it really simple. I mean, by simple, I mean really, really simple. And people cannot, and I know why. They cannot, because they've never been taught to think that way. This is the secret of the lost art of retroduction. It's the secret of the Pythagoreans, uh, the Platonists, Neoplatonists, the Indians. It goes by many different names, anamnesis, uh, theurgy, retroduction, apophoticism, via negativa. But I'm going to make it really, really, really simple, and I'm never, ever intending to use big words. I'm absolutely not. You know, these are the words that I've been using most of my life, and I certainly don't consider them big. But people only have ideas of ritual or practice or doing something, and then the idea of not doing anything. And we have these antinomies of false belief. And I've said a million times that belief is the enemy to understanding and absolutely the enemy or the Satan, if you will, to wisdom. And uh, to start off with one that's perfectly in line with that, and that's not about this video, that people have the idea there's only two things in this world as far as beliefs or understanding or paths. One is based in atomism slash nihilism. We call it atheism. It doesn't matter what you call it. True atheism, by the way, is metaphysical atheism. You can go look up what that is. It has nothing to do with God one way or the other. The other one is creationism. People think there's only two camps that you're in. You're either like an atomist, a nihilist, an atheist. Um, these are all one and the exact same thing. You know, you're, you're just a belief in materiality and life and beauty in life and all the horrors of life. It's just a cosmic, uh, cosmic flatulence you know, that has uh, come together and you're of that position. Or 
here are the position that the, there's uh, some evil, twisted, uh, old entity somewhere up in the sky and that uh, he's abusing his creations uh, because he didn't bestow them with enough wisdom. You know, creationism. You know, I don't want to rant on creationism. And that's completely not the case. Both of these are antinomies. Creationism slash atomism. The complete inverse to both of those things is uh, emanationism. And it's not a religion, it's a metaphysics. Religion is secularized metaphysics, by the way. And by secularized metaphysics, what I mean is, of course, dumbed down metaphysics, made simple for the simple minds. And this is the perfect uh, principle that leads us into, you know, the idea of apophaticism or via negativa, because true theology, of course, is a spiritual or metaphysical anamnesis. I can't say practice because practice implies ritual and doing something. By the way, ritual or practice is the meaning of the ancient, ancient, really old, original three Greek muses of melite. It means practice or ritual. And this is what people do today. They say, well, I do meditation. This is a word that's undefined. We can't use that word. And people say, why? I know what it means. Like, yes, in your mind, you know what that word means. But everybody has a different definition for that word. That word is completely undefined. The original, which nobody knows, except for the fact that I just told it to you, has any clue what that word means. And everybody's got their own idea of it. So we have to reject it because it is completely A-specific. It is top five most A-specific words in any language. Meditation. But practice or ritual. But people engage in that. And they think it's something which is doing. If everybody's heard of the word karma, and people have a really, really twisted understanding of the meaning of the word karma, but ultimately means action or practice or ritual. You know, you're going to do something and it's going to get something. Like, I work hard, I make money, and I can spend the money on things that I want or need. The second Greek muse is the true Greek muse and the, the muse of theurgy. And, of course, this is the path of liberation and wisdom and transcendence and disobjectification from the psychophysical, that is the Greek muse, minime. It means recollection, but not conventional recollection. Or sati, or anamnesis, or apophaticism. It goes by many different names in many different languages. By the way, there's a great uh, little article on this. Uh, it's by Dr. Anandikitish Kumaraswamy. You'll find free copies of it online. Thanks to me, you're welcome. It's called uh, Recollection, Indian and uh, Platonic. You will not get anything about what I'm saying in this video in that article, but you'll get a lot of references and some insights. Um, ultimately, we're talking about participating in proximity. Wisdom, as I've said many countless times, is just a fancy word for self-proximity. So we're participating in that. Um, ignorance begets the premise of an ignorant being, of which all beings are ignorant. And there's two different types of beings. There's conventional being, psychophysical being, and transcendent being. Ignorance begets the idea, what that I were many? To be scattered amongst the many. In other words, you, this is, of course, the ultimate uh, evil of people who want control over others. They don't even have control over themselves, yet they want control over other people. Totally an evil thing. So ignorance begets this, what that I were many, which ultimately, given enough wisdom, begets the thought or premise, would that I were myself. In other words, whole in that which I am. To desire a wholesome desire, there's every desire is unwholesome, akusala, unwholesome. And there's only one wholesome desire, which can be fulfilled. If the desire can never be fulfilled like a bottomless pit, of course it's unwholesome. If it can be fulfilled, which if there is only one, i.e. wisdom, then it is, then it is wholesome. Would that I were myself. So this means that you're scattered, but what's the reason why you're scattered? Um, people talk about recollection or practice, and once again, we're dealing with two antinomies, and I'm getting to it here very quickly. So we're interested in the spiritual metaphysical amnesia and how to reverse it. As Plotinus said, memory is uh, for those who have forgotten. To be scattered is to be thinned, and of course to be diluted. People say, what is theurgy? And I say, well, what's the opposite of dilution? Concentration? Okay, but when you say concentration, that's almost as bad as saying meditation. Concentrating. When you say concentration, 
Everybody on this earth thinks the same thing. You're going to sit there, you're going to burn the wood between your ears, you're going to concentrate. You can't get there from here. That is an action, that is a practice, that is a ritual. People say, well, I do it and it calms me down. It's like, yes, it does. But that's not wisdom and that is no basis for nor the path of liberation. It cannot be. You know, uh, genuine metaphysics is hyper-rational and is hyper-logical and that idea to think that that leads in any way to wisdom or liberation, of course, is completely impossible and totally irrational. Um, of course, to be scattered is to be thinned and diluted. Uh, we're ha talking about an anamnesis of selfhood. And by selfhood, I mean self with a capital S, i.e. the transcendent S. What is the inverse of delusion, I tell people? I say, well, it's not concentration. You know, not doing or karma, because karma just means action. People think, well, I need to concentrate. And this is nothing other than an action of mind or will. Psychophysical consciousness, right? You pass white light through a red filter, right? that red light has a beginning in time because it started when the white light passed through and of course light doesn't pass through right now the filter and you have red light in other words that red light is the consubstantiality of two things the white light and the red filter right you cannot purify that consciousness is no different than that red light it has a beginning in time it has an end in time and the idea of purifying it in any way shape or form or using it as a practice or a ritual you know, is trying to polish a turd. You can't get there from here. Once again, we're getting to the same thing of people have an idea of that there's only two things, kind of like creationism and atomism slash nihilism. People think there's only two things regarding a practice, if you will, or a ritual. And of course, ritual is the antithesis, is against the slayer of wisdom. We are talking about not action and not inaction. People say, well, what's the opposite of doing practice or ritual slash karma versus not doing anything, i.e. catapraxis or catalepsy? This is what a lot, a lot of Zen folks actually do. And by the way, the people that do Zen are not actually doing Zen because Zen is a Japanese uh, word from the Chinese word chana, which comes from the Sanskrit word dhyana, which comes from the Pali Prakrit word the jana, which means jayati, to burn. But you're burning away objectivity. When you're burning away objectivity, we're talking about, I have the perfect little example here. A rich buddy of mine gave me this rock. I don't know if you can see it here, but there's gold right in here. Maybe about 200 bucks worth of gold. You can see it here. You may or may not be able to see it. It's, it's gold bearing matrix. It's from Alaska. So there might be 200, I don't know, 300 dollars of the gold in this. But as it sits, it's completely worthless. And the premise of John not burning away, what are we doing? We're interested only in the gold, are we not? Because gold is gold is gold, right? Well, there's $300 of the gold in this, for example. Why can't I get $300 for it? Because it's unactualized. Say, there's a certain type of red dye that's incredibly valuable. I forget what it is. But if you take a bunch of it and you squirt it into a gallon jug of distilled water, it will vanish rather quickly. You know it's there. But it's, it's gone. But it's still there. It's just so scattered. So, well, you're trying to, you know, you've decentrated it. You've diluted it. When you've decentrated something, you've made it dilute. Gold is gold is gold. If there's $300 of gold here, why can't I get $300 for this rock? Because it's scattered amongst all this uh, ferromagnetic uh, matrix rock. And in some cases, depending on the type of matrix, you can see the gold here on the edge. You burn it. And this burns away, and you end up with, as long as you don't burn it too hot, um, you end up with the gold liquid that's actually uh, gathered and then concentrated out of that. Burning is absolutely perfect. There's no such thing as purifying gold. Think about that just for a second. Gold is never purified. It is concentrated out of something else that it is scattered in. This idea of gold purification Extraction, ultimately, when we say gold purification, because gold is never purified, it is extracted and made concentric out of something else. But you can't get there through practice or ritual. In the case of this, there is a practice or ritual. We have to burn it and do all these processes to extract the gold. When I say people, well, if you want to know what theurgy is, it's the inverse of dilution. You know, it's not concentration. It's not doing or karma, because karma means action or agency. It is not thought. It is certainly not conscious effort. It is certainly not doing nothing. 
which is called catapraxis or nihilism or atheism. I got a perfect radio analogy for that. The radio analogy just keeps giving and giving and giving. Perfect analogy here. Nearly perfect analogy. It's rather an undoing. So it's not karma. It's not doing karma. And it's certainly not not doing. Not doing would, of course, just be turning the radio off. Um, this is what the Zen, a lot of the Zen folks do. Well, I, I'm sick of this, you know. And then I hear that chatter. Turn it off, and then I'm going to, back here is the button somewhere. You disconnect the radio, I mean the battery, you know, from uh, the radio. There we go. This is, this is non-doing. I'm just going to set the stuff here, and that's it. That's not the answer. The other one, of course, is the idea of agency ship. We're doing something. I need to do something. You're going to sit here, and you're going to tune the frequencies. You're going to adjust the antenna, you're going to make it more powerful, you're going to increase the gain, this and this and this and this. But what you're listening to out of the speaker is not the signal, that's the broadcast. The broadcast is the consubstantia, because this radio is that red filter. Okay, the signal, of course, is uh, um, brought in harmonic to the antenna. In the case of life, that antenna is water, because water is a dipole antenna. It may manifest as process through all this, this entire radio is that red filter. You cannot do something with that red light that has a beginning in time. And it's consubstantial. It's consubstantial, the broadcast, that which, that which comes out of the speaker, which is exactly analogous to consciousness. You cannot do anything to it or with it. You can't silence it. You can silence it. You can smash the radio. But that does nothing about demodulating the signal. All of these things is regarding liberation to say the exact same thing, demodulation or detuning. This is an undoing. People, when you tell people this, and it, it, I'm not picking on people, and I say, y you, people only just like creationism and nihilism. It's just those two. Like, no. There's something totally opposite about, something totally the opposite of doing and not doing anything, or like turning the radio off and, you know, smashing the radio or disconnecting the radio from the battery. That does nothing to or with the signal, right? Of course I'm right. I'm perfectly right. So it is an undoing. It is having something that is done and constructed being undone, but permanently undone through wisdom, permanently undone. What has been done is that the gold has been scattered in this host rock. Say so there's maybe $300, I don't know, of gold in this host rock. You can see it. But I'm going to undo it. I'm not going to like throw it in the trash because I can't get any money. If I, you know, like, oh, there's $300 here. I can't go out and buy $300 worth of groceries with this. People laugh at me, right? And then someone's like discouraged. Well, you know, I'll just throw it away. I'm going to fix this thing, and I'm going to heat it up. I'm going to do stuff. It's like, well, you've extracted the gold now. That is, of course, a doing. That's almost a perfect analogy against what I'm actually saying, but it's not doing uh, anything to both of these things so you can't actually get rid of the, the black host rock. You can't do anything, a more perfect analogy than the radio analogy, by tuning or adjusting things or increasing gain. I could screw a better antenna on this, which I actually have, for better gain. That does nothing regarding the, removing, uh, the removal of the modulation of the signal. So no actions can lead to it. Inaction, mentally and physically, of course, cannot lead to it either. This is where everybody gets confused. They think there's only doing and not doing anything at all. You people say, well, when I engage in catapraxis or catalepsy, which is basically blanking your mind out. That's where they actually stick a chicken and they draw a line in the dirt and they put the chicken's head down and it will sit there and stare at that line and not move like it's a zombie. You could find countless videos and facts on this. Um, tuning the stations are doing, not doing, turn out the radio or taking them. It's unmodulating the signal. This is what bhava niroda nibbana means. Also too, yoga chitta vritti niroda. Vritti and bhava becoming is no different than sansara. Here's three different words that are exactly the same thing. You don't have to know ancient Sanskrit or Pali. Sansara. Most people have heard of sansara. It's, like, hey, it's a round of suffering. Sansara means to go round and round and round and round, which is no different than talking about uh, the polarization of any signal, which has a frequency. It's going round and round and round around a central core axis because all light and all EMR is a coaxial circuit. Sansara. That word. Here's the other word, which means the exact same thing. Bhava, which means becoming. Becoming is to go round and round and round and round. Sarati, to go round and round and round. Bhava, 
round and round and round of becoming. Both, okay, these two words are exactly the same. Here's the third word, which means the same thing. Vritti, perturbation, agitation. It's no different than saying frequency or modulation. Every major text uses three, actually four different words. The, the fourth one is rather complicated when I get into that one. But these three words in referring to liberation. It has nothing to do with doing or not to doing. Rather, the removal of modulation. The removal of the modulation is unbecoming. This is apophaticism. This is theurgy. This is anamnesis. But people get confused. I don't get it. You know, I need to concentrate. When you say concentrate, every person on this earth thinks the same thing. I'm going to sit there. I'm going to burn the wood between my ears. They'll sit there. They'll actually talk about some of these Zeners and some Tibetans. They'll start sweating. Like it'd be like frigid cold outside. And they'll actually talk about it in a praiseworthy fashion. They do. Not my opinion, a fact. It'd be like freezing cold. And they're sitting there burning so much mental energy, burning the wood between their ears, that they'll start to sweat. You can't get there from here. There's no purification of a turd. There's no purification of the red light. There's no purification of the broadcast. That which comes out of this speaker cannot be purified. It has a beginning in time and an end in time, and is the consubstantial byproduct. Kind of like the child is the consubstantial byproduct of uh, mother and father. Yeah. And it has a beginning in time, is born on such and such a day. You cannot get there from here. This is no different than talking about creationism versus nihilism. These are two antinomies. They're diametrically opposed to the truth. Yet everybody on this earth, or 99.99999%, thinks there's only those two. Just as people think there's only those two regarding um, wisdom. If people consider wisdom at all, which they usually don't. It's either doing something, karma, action, or agency. Which is no different than saying sansara, bhava, and vritti. These three words are exactly the same. To go round and round and round. Bhava means becoming. Um, uh, vritti means perturbation or agitation. These three words are the exact same thing. The ending of these three things is said to be wisdom, is said to culminate in, of course, liberation. But liberation of what, by what, from what? It is not doing and it is not undoing. It, excuse me, it is not doing versus uh, uh, nihilism or oblivionism, catapraxis, catalepsy. Um, it is undoing. It is making undone by manner of wisdom vis-a-vis -vis self proximity, this apophaticism, this theurgy to self proximity, which is the inverse of both of those antinomies. Neither of which, of course, could logically lead to or culminate in any wisdom, much less liberation, uh, removal of false uh, identification, agnosis, this identification phenomenology, which goes on and on and on in perpetuity forever. This is what people are doing when they use the word meditation. They're talking about the word melite, which in Latin became meditatio, and from the Latin meditatio we have the word meditatio. It's a ritual, it's a practice. You can't get there from here. Well, I have a practice. Well, good for you. Your practice is action, karma, and you can't get there. You can't demodulate the signal by sitting here changing the frequency and improving the radio and improving the gain and doing all this stuff. I'm going to do stuff to this radio. Yeah, you made the signal come through more clearly, but you've not in any way effectuated wisdom or liberation. That is completely illogical and highly irrational. Um, I read every comment. I hope you like this video. If you do, if you're able to contact me, my information is in the link below. Any donation is always warmly welcome, even if it's a buck. Or you could email me tell much how much you hated this video. But if you do that, please be sure to attach your rational, your rational and logical reasoning behind it, which nobody ever does. I liked that video. I hated it. Okay, tell me why. No, I can't do that. <laughs> Have a lovely week. I hey, like my new black shirt. Yeah, it was cheap, and it fit. <laughs>